Hey everybody, I'm Sean C. Davis, and I'm gonna show you how you can use Node.js to search for images on Unsplash using their API and their SDK. Now, the first thing you're going to wanna to do is to apply for an Unsplash developer account, and once you have that, you can then register an app. You can click on, so notice I was on, on let me go back real quick, unsplash.com slash developers, and there's a button here that says your apps. I just have one little demo app called localhost, and then what you're going to need, I'm going to slow down slowly so I don't give it away, is there's keys and then there's an access key down here. You'll have an access key and a private key. For now, for searching, all you're going to need is the access key. Now, one big caveat as we're getting into this is you are limited to 50 searches per, uh, it might, actually it might even just be 50 images that get returned to you per uh, hour. So it's it's super limited on uh, demo uh, on demo applications, but it's enough to get started and to do some tinkering. Okay, so I've taken that key and I've put it over here in this .envrc file. You can set up your environment variables however you would like to. And what I have here is just a super basic package with an index.js script that we are going to run to generate our images. So on this uh, on the script, just to make sure everything is working as we would expect, let's say hello and let's pull our terminal up over here and just say, there it is. No, uh, I'm, I'm using the, the node program to run this index.js file and I get hello back. So that's great. We have something to start with. Now first, let's download a couple of dependencies that we can work with. So we are going to install uh, unsplash, if I can type, unsplash.js, node fetch, and that's, that, that should be all we need for now. Okay, so those are installed, and let's get them set up over here, and we'll say we're going to, we're going to do a few things. We're going to import fetch from node fetch. In fact, you know what I haven't done is I'm going to open up my package.json file and say this is a module so I can use imports. Be nice and fancy over here. And then let's um, let's look at what we can get from Unsplash. We should be able to get the uh, create API is what we're going to want. And let's let's start there for now. Okay, the first thing we have to do is we're gonna use this node fetch library. And so we're just gonna say global.fetch equals fetch, great. And then let's set up our unsplash client. So uh, we'll, we'll just give it the variable of unsplash. And then we're gonna call this create API function that we pulled in. And we, uh, the, the only um, argument we pass in is you can see that, that it's looking for initialized per, uh, initial parameters. And if we look, lots of options here. All we really need to do for this example is use access key. And because I have stored this uh, access key as an environment variable, I can say process.env, again, if I can learn to type. And I believe I have this as unsplash access key. Hopefully I don't mess this up. Okay, and let's move that. In fact, let's uh, let's do this. Let's let's rearrange our windows a little bit so that you can see a little bit better. Okay, and what I usually like to do just to make sure things are working and I haven't totally screwed everything up is let's make sure that I have unsplash open running and we can now run node again and I've I've got my client good great and we can notice over here one of the properties is search so that seems like that's something we can use and the other thing to note here is that search is not a function it is an object and there are multiple different search functions within there and so we're going to actually call get photos and then we can pass that a query so what we can do is we can say, and notice here, uh, real quick, just to go back to my package.json file, again, because I have type module, I also have this benefit of using top-level awaits. 
So um, you you would probably would handle this differently if, um, if 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 that's not the case. You would have to wrap it in um, uh, an asynchronous function, which is okay. All right, and then we're going to say photos, and we will. This is this is an asynchronous function um, that we're going to use. Get photos over here. So unsplash dot search dot get photos and then we can pass it a query and let's look at our options here we have lots of options to affect what is returned to us and and um, how that how that result is shaped and everything like that but for now let's just look at the query and let's pick something let's see let's look for a how about a tiger yeah that sounds fun tiger okay and for now let's uh, let's let's log everything to the console before we get too fancy with this so we can say console log and then what we're going to do is json parse photos two let's see if i did that did i do that right uh not parse not parse stringify stringify okay great back over here node index.js holy smokes lots of stuff came back okay so this uh that was that was humongous that was a lot of a lot of things returned so uh rather than trying to read that all over here in the console maybe we should just write it to file so with for that let's bring in our file system um, library module and just make things easier let's also bring in uh, path i am really struggling with the typing today okay and our uh, maybe our output path is path.join and we've got our new name and we'll just say uh, our output file, you know, maybe, maybe we say output file. Um, and this will be, sure, just photos.json. That seems, that seems fine. And then that's, this is what we're going to want to write to file, but we, instead we can say write file sync. Let's use our output file. And then our data is going to be this, and we'll make it nice and pretty at first. And that should do the that should do the trick. Let's come over here, run it again. And we did some oh yeah, right. Dir name is not a thing we can use. I, I, I constantly forget this because um jumping uh, in, in between different versions of node all the time. Okay, this is instead process dot uh, no current working directory. Okay. Let's try one more time. And now let's go back to our file explorer and notice that we have a photos.json file fantastic close this look through it okay now a little bit easier to read we've got the syntax highlighting which is very cool um, we can see that we have our response object and uh, first success type here's our response we see we got a lot of objects or a lot of photos returned to us. And so this is really long. I mean, what if we looked at the body? Yeah, 2,000 lines of results here. Um, and here's one. Okay, so even one photo has a lot of stuff going on. I mean, yeah, there, there's, there's, a, there's a ton going on, which is... Um, it's great. It's great. Okay, so we have we have a lots of options here. Um, Bengal tiger is our result. Now, I mean that that in itself is like that. That's it. You can you can stop there. Uh, you can do what you want to do with that API and apply it to your project. You can see that getting started with the Unsplash API is super simple. Now, again, you only have a limited number of requests per hour. So, and, and I, I believe that is 50 at the time of making this video. So um, you have to take that into account while you're developing, but, um, but, but you have a lot of options. And, and one thing I would suggest while you're developing is maybe don't overwrite this 
uh, file every time. Maybe you create a new file. So you've got these cache responses that you can mess with. So you can figure out exactly what you want to do with the responses in your application without having to continue to write that API. But regardless, let's, let's tinker just a little bit more just to see what you can do. Um, and in particular, I wanted to kind of look at the shape of this object. So there's, there's a lot of great meta information about each response. You've, you've got the dimensions of it. You have a color. Um, you've, you've got a description. You have various URLs, links to, um, li links to different actions, links to where you can get to the photo on the web. Um, yeah, likes, and then you've got information about the user. So you could get, uh, you could, you could provide attribution. So many options here, tags. Yeah. And it goes deep and deeper and deeper. Um, generally what you're going to want to do is look at this URLs property. And, um, so what we could do as an example is we could, rather than writing this to file, what if we just said, okay, tell me the, give me the first photo. So we know the shape of this. So let's, assuming we have a response and results, and we know that is an array. And then, oh, that is an array, right? Um, yeah, results, response, results. Let's see if I can, uh, Okay, no, that's that's not gonna give me. That's results zero. Well, we could be we could be safer about this, but yeah, here we go. Here we go. This is what I want. We're gonna assume URLs. Let's let's start there. Okay, response result. Okay, so this is gonna be our first result, and then we'll get that URLs property. So we should see this return to us. So let's take a look at that. Great, and now we see we've got a number of options here. What we probably want is raw because we can then further manipulate it. So let's um, let's go back here. Again, you want to put checks in to make sure that you actually have this content because if you don't have any results, we're gonna throw an error here. Okay, and run that again, and we've got this URL. Now, what happens if I open this up? Look at that. There's an awesome Bengal tiger. Very cool. But this is it, one, one thing about Unsplash that you may or may not know is that Unsplash is sitting on top of, or, or I should say, Unsplash is using ImageX to, um, to, to host and deliver its, well, it's, it's hosting with uh, S3, I believe, but ImageX is helping to serve and transform those images. And um, ImageX has a transforming API, or I guess they call it a rendering API. And there are lots of options here. And so what you can do is if we look, if you look at this URL here, notice that we've got the photo and then there's this IXID param. Now you do have to keep that one the same. That's part of the fair usage agreement. So we're just going to leave that where it is but this is the raw URL. So we can, we can make a lot of um, manipulations to this. So for example, let's, let's set this to a variable instead and call it photo URL. And there's our raw URL. Now let's say, um, I, and, and maybe we say raw URL, and then why don't we say square URL? And that will be raw URL. And then we know we've got that IXID parameter. So we're going to, we, we can simply just append an ampersand and say, how about we say fit crop and let's, uh, maybe we want it 800 by 800. And now let's log our square URL, go back to our Terminal, run it again. Okay, and now notice we have uh, the full URL, and at the end, we've applied some additional parameters. Let's see what that gives us. And look at that. Notice that it's the same image, but we have different dimensions. We've cropped it a little bit differently, and we can do all sorts of fun stuff here 
Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Send me messages on Twitter. I'm Sean C. Davis 29. Let me know what you want to see next. We can go deeper on this topic or many other sort of modern web development explorations. Let me know and I will see you next time.